Welcome to Sharpen the Axe. Explore the bleeding edge of guitar and bass gear. Discover a sound uniquely your own and cut through the noise. With your hosts, Eric Lucero and Paul Berzetsky. All right. Hey, guys. Welcome to another episode of Sharpen the Axe. I'm Eric Lucero. I'm Paul Berzetsky. And we're actually uh, broadcasting live today from the, well, not live, but pre-taped. Either way, from uh, the Pitbull Audio Store in National City. And our feature today is Paul Reed Smith, uh, Guitars and Amplifiers. Do you have much experience with Paul Reed Smith? I never, oh, well, actually, scratch that. I owned one for a short amount of time, but I ended up selling it and then regretting it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll happen. Uh, which, uh, which model did you own? Do you remember? Uh, I don't remember. It was one of the, the entry-level ones uh, from oh. Craigslist. And I ended up selling it to a friend who was har more hard up for it than I was. Right on. So it was one of the SEs, one of the yeah, 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 more yeah. Uh, inexpensive yeah. import ones. Right on. But it was really nice. Right on, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, they, of course, while we're featuring them today, they make quality instruments uh, and very uh, awesome, beautiful instruments, as always. Uh, we'll start with what you got in your arms right here. We, uh, at Pitbull Audio, have a special run of CE24s. Uh, like the normal CE24s, they are bolt-ons with mahogany bodies and uh, maple tops. What's special about these, we got Quilt Maple. In this case right here, it's Ezra Green Smoke Burst. Very, very cool finish. Right, yeah. You can even still see uh, some lighter grains of the uh, or of uh, the natural kind of beneath the green. Right, it, it's right. really cool looking. Uh, if you flip it to the back, part of what makes uh, our special run here so special is the black satin finish on the neck, which is awesome. Great feel for playing. Uh, this one has a, a gloss black back, but we have uh, some in, in a blue that have natural backs and some in in a uh, black cherry that actually have a uh, cherry tinted backs as oh, well nice. right yeah it looks great has the wood binding and the 8515 pickups and also uh coil splits as you've been messing with and uh on the cap of the headstock also for this special run it's a matte black finish with the gold paul reed smith lettering uh it's really really nice run we got going for us here at pitbull audio I want to just turn up and see what she sounds like. Sure. And uh, since uh, PRS started doing these uh, coil splitter gu guitars, I've been super impressed with them because yeah. <laughs> like I. I can't make it through through a show, even if it's a, a nice guitar with, with humbuckers. Everything sounds good. Like I just need to have single coils at, at some point. And these actually sound very legit. I, I was really impressed with this is uh, this is on the neck with the coil split. And, very nice. And the full hum humbucker now. Basically, I, I like having humbuckers for heavier stuff, but clean, like na nasty, like greasy funk. I got to have single coils, so this is an awesome right. option to have, and it sounds really, really good to my ears. And you don't have to take the your Paul Reed Smith to the tech anymore and have right. him uh, uh, split, put in the right uh, pot for a split coil or yeah, split coil. Uh, you can just have it right off the bat, right off the line from Paul Reed Smith now, and of course the same great feeling neck, same awesome playability. <laughs> Do you have it on humbucker right now? Uh, right now on humbucker. Here, yeah. let's let's go to the dirty channel. Let's We're actually ahead. using the Paul Reed Smiths on zero twenty, their new amp, which we'll get to uh, after this. But let's hear that this neck humbucker or bridge humbucker on dirty. Right on. That's with pretty much everything at noon. Uh, it is a sweet sounding guitar. Let's let's hear a little bit of some lead work on that neck pickup. On the yeah yeah there we go. That throaty lead that they're known for sounding yeah. awesome. So uh, how about you tell me uh, how you feel playing it? Uh first thing that struck me was the neck really comfortable like you said the satin back is 
you know, very, very smooth and let, lets you get around the neck quickly with, without a lot of friction. Uh, just like feels really natural, like a, a nice kind of uh, uh, kind of compromise between like a, a fat t tonal neck and you know pl playable. It's kind of like yeah. right there in the middle where it's comfortable. I like the way the way it's rounded around the edges, so it's super comfortable. Not yes, yeah, you, no, you don't no, shred uh, yourself yeah. do, doing that. Yeah, no cutting yourself or the inside of your fingers on uh, on frets there. And yeah, it's a not like a you know, Ibanez or Jackson sort of thin, but it's just thin enough to be comfortable and get around quickly on. Exactly, exactly. So you can always check out online at pitbullaudio.com our special run of CE24s. We got, uh, I think, maybe a little less than a dozen of them in some beautiful, beautiful finishes. Again, this is the Ezra Green Smoke Burst. We have other ones in Black Cherry and uh, various blue hues. Is this a graphite nut? I believe it is. Yeah, a graphite nut on it. And it has uh, locking tuners as well. Oh, very cool. Actually, I'm sorry. Those are not locking tuners. I was incorrect on that. No. But nonetheless, it is an awesome guitar. Holds tune really well despite not being locking. And has uh, this awesome trem on it as well that is a Paul Reed Smith design. <laughs> You're having too much fun on that. <laughs> So we do have a whole slew of other uh, 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 Paul Reed Smith instruments with us. Uh, we, of course, as I mentioned, we are playing into the amp, which is a a new a new uh, a model from them called the Sonzera. It's 20 watt one by 12 combo. You got a, a clean and a dirty channel. Uh, also onboard reverb and a global presence control. You also got a couple bright switches right there, or a bright switch, I should say. But that'll be uh, providing the sound projection for us today uh so you'll get to hear it over the course uh, you want to move on to the next one or you just fall into in love with that ce24 <laughs> right there i could try the next one sure sure all right let's move on i'm digging this amp too the really nice uh cleans and uh i, I really like the drive on it right yeah it's it's a very versatile amp it's uh 6l6 uh power tube output stage and a 12AX7 and ECC83S on the input. So very familiar sort of American sound, but in a Paul Reed Smith uh, appointments. Now what I have just given to uh, Paul here is the McCarty 594. What makes this one special is uh, first off the 25.594 inch scale length. Uh, it's, uh, we'll, we'll ask uh, John Ewing, our, our uh, Pitbull Audio's uh, Paul Reed Smith rep, about why that's important later. Comes with 5815 low turn pickups. Uh, it has, both of them are, are individual coil splits on the tone controls. Uh, rosewood fingerboard. This one is in faded whale blue satin and a beautiful rosewood cap on the headstock as well. I, uh, I really, really like this one. Uh, it's a great playing guitar. Why don't you give it a shot there, Paul? Let's go. Let's split it. So in uh, in humbucker, it does have that cool neck humbucker throatiness to mm -hmm. it, very warm sound. But it still has a, a great amount of snap to it when you when you uh, split the coils. Why don't you give us a shot of it in uh, bridge? Let's see what that's or yeah. Oh, that is a juicy one. Right. <laughs> Very nice, yeah. That is uh, definitely has some teeth to it. Yeah, it's uh, for a low turn, a you know, kind of a closer to a vintage style, a vintage output pickup. It still has plenty of bite to it when you want it to, to have some. Uh, let's how about we split the coil and hear how that is clean. Uh, this is the neck, right? 
Or the bridge, you mean? The yeah. bridge, sorry. Yeah. coil bridge sounded like and i love it but uh yeah how are you feeling on this uh 594 here what this do you think a, paul this is a powerhouse for sure really really chunky juicy high output you could you could do some damage with this yeah right yeah <laughs> it's uh it is a very cool new model from paul reed smith it's uh a lot of the guys that want a more vintage sound or more class i guess classic yeah. styled guitar you know mahogany body uh, a little thicker in this case, neck, I think, right? Yes. Actually, that is another great point, is that this is now the pattern vintage neck. It's asymmetrical, a little lighter, a little thinner towards the treble side, a little thicker towards the bass side, but without being, you know, one of the old baseball bat necks. It is pretty neat and also has that same satin finish we saw on the, uh, on the uh, CE24. But, I mean, they really thought out this one. It is a killer, killer instrument. And it looks like brass brass saddles here. Yes, yeah, it is the their hybrid hardware there, is what they call it. This looks really cool, right? The chrome and chrome and brass combo. Yeah, I dig it. Although I do admit, I kind of would love to see a Bigsby on one of these and see what mm -hmm. that would look like. Uh, but or, or as always, I'm a fan of the mastery trams, but that's not going to happen. Uh, but it is a powerhouse of a guitar, as you said, Paul, and it is sounding and playing killer. Any other thoughts on it? Um. What do they run? Uh, that depends what you get on them. There's a couple different options. You know, you want to get an artist package or 10 top. It, it goes up a little bit. Mm -hmm. This one I want to say is around the 4200 mark in your, in your uh, arms right there. And it is, again, the McCarty 594 in satin faded whale blue. This thing is just killer. I was a fan of the uh, blue jean sort of uh, oh, yeah. finishes that Paul Reed Smith did in the early 2000s and this is the closest I've seen in a while. That's what it reminds me so of. So it's very, yeah, right? Yeah, that's, a, it, it, it would match your favorite pair of blue jeans. Yeah. But it is a very awesome guitar. Also again with the natural binding. Yeah, you could see the detail in it really. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, they picked some nicely figured wood to, to shave from for the binding. I like it. Very, very cool. So we got two more with us. We have a, another 10 top, a custom 24 to Paul's left over there. And this one is an orange tiger burst. And the custom 24, again, a, a classic from Paul Reed Smith's lines. Oh, yeah. And we've, you're, uh, we've you're, done... You're coming home with me. <laughs> <laughs> we've done pretty well with the... Uh, Tiger type bursts, and this is a, another great example. A ten top. Can't can never figure out which one there is the are. which one is the standby. Now this one has the sp the splitter built right into the, the yeah. Five -way it's selector, a five way right? switch, yeah. Kind of like you'd find on a Fender type guitar, or Stratocaster. Put on standby again. Yeah, you did. <laughs> it's all good. There we are. So, so in this position, it's a full humbucker, right? Second position is split. Mm -hmm. This is both as a humbuck as humbuckers. Off the top of my head, I don't know actually. actually it might be the inside coils as well, which we'll uh, we'll ask John about in a bit. There is the, the split the coil on the neck, yeah, and then neck full at the end there. And full neck. Right. Let's hear let's hear a little bit of that neck again and uh some drive on it. Singing when you just 
Yeah, when you just those harmonics come yeah. out, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a player's guitar for sure. It is, it is just meant to be, meant to be rocked. Yeah. And also we can flip it. I just love, again, this, the nat, the tint on the back here is just beautiful looking. But again, it's a, it's a classic from Paul Reed Smith's core lineup. At what's not to love about it? Yeah. Let's hear a little bit more. How about we hear uh -huh. the bridge or, or the coal splits, whatever you choose. Let's do... Nice. Very cool. So uh, any thoughts on this one? Really sporty. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. it is. It is kind of like picking up, you know, the equivalent of a Lamborghini or a Ferrari for, for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, it is, again, a, a great guitar meant to be played. This one has the pattern thin neck, so it's uh, a lead player's yeah. dream. I think I, I like these uh, these profile necks a little better. Yeah? I got used to kind of thinner ones. So in... Uh, now, in comparison, say to something that's more uh, speed oriented, like again, like I mentioned, a Jackson or Ibanez. Th those are a little too thin for me. A little too thin. Yeah, th this yeah. is about perfect for me, where it's kind of r right in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Right on. I like it. Anything else you want to try on that, or shall we be moving on? Let's try. <laughs> Yeah, right. It's uh, not not bad for a, a lead channel on a on this Paul Reed Smith amp. It's got a lot more gain on tap than one would expect, and of course, and we're, as expected. And we're barely on the we're barely at like one. On yeah, the, on the level on this. Yeah, on on our uh, gain channel, let's, we're let's barely how, up. Let's see how heavy this drive gets. <laughs> That got pretty heavy. Uh, that's a lot more gain on tap than I really expected, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> but that's uh, very awesome. Uh, let's see. Oh, and also another note. Um, uh, on the clean channel here, you get just uh, bass and treble. You get drive and mids added on the dirty channel along with a gain bright switch. But, um, yeah, surprising a little array of tones on this uh, Sanzera 20 here. Oh, we're still on dirty, huh? Yep. What, what do you think about this uh, f five way coil split system? You uh, you dig it? Uh, I yeah, because uh, it's it's a great move for versatility. Again, because I mean, why try to figure out ways to 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 mod your guitar if you can get something that's right off the line a little more closer to what you well, need? I, I mean, as opposed to like this model with the with the push pull on the oh the, the, okay, you mean the the switch instead of having yeah, the push yeah. pull? Um, I think I prefer the push pull myself, to be honest. Yeah. It, I guess, imagine it's just a matter of what you're used to. Yeah, because I mean, if I'm using single, well, I mean, my main guitar is P90, so it's kind of single coily anyway. Yeah. But if I'm trying to do something with a coil split, it's typically in clean, uh, single notes, something along that lines. And I, when I go to crunch, it's easier for me to knock just, down a knob than to slide something over and hope I'm at the sure. right position. 
But but I kind of dig this too. This is more of like an integrated thing. Like this is just these are the tone selections out in this guitar. You don't have to think about it in terms of that. So I, yeah, I kind of yeah. dig this approach too. Um, but at least we know. At least we know. Paul Reed Smith makes the options for the players out there. If you want something with push pulls, it's there. If you want something with a five way, it's available in twenty two and twenty four frets. All this is a twenty four fret one right here. And they have been doing some uh, different things here and there, trying out some new ideas aside from variations on their classics. Which brings us to uh, our next one. And uh, honestly, uh, this is my favorite out the bunch. I like it even more than the 594 we tried is the Vela, which is part of their S2 series. Which is uh, their offset with a uh, single coil in the neck and the Starla humbucker in the bridge. Uh, mahogany body. This one has a rosewood neck and uh, comes in cherry finish. Well, say again. What's this one again? It is a single coil. Single. Huh. Very cool looking. Ooh. Right. Oh, I'm. Uh, and a 25 inch scale on this guy too. These sound amazing together. Right. Yeah. So the humbucker came from their uh, Starla guitar line and. Let's add it onto the bridge here. This is this is great. I have a guitar that I've been messing around with, uh, you know, sticking other pickups in there, and I tried to do a, a humbucker and a bridge and a P90 in in the neck, and together they, they sound crappy. Oh really? Yeah. That's such a common and popular uh, pickup combination these just, days. Maybe they're just maybe they were mismatched. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah? I just mismatched them. Uh, but this is this sounds great, and I, I, like I normally avoid the middle position on most guitars because I just. Just don't doesn't know. suit you. Yeah, just yeah. don't know what to. Except sometimes, just like playing, uh, playing in a band, just that it happens where like there's so much going on in the sonic space where that's where you know it's cutting through the best or sounds the most coherent. But but by myself, I tend to stay away from it. But on this one, right away, this is like right, my, right what you like. Yeah. yeah. Nice and warm and round on, on the bottom and you know that nice shimmery on top. Right. Really nice. So that's the middle, this is the neck. Let's hear with a little bit of drive. If you guys are in a Leonard Skinner cover band, this is <laughs> this is the way to go. Right. Not that I actually know any Skinner licks, but that, I don't that, either. That yeah, that sound and that crunch sounds right in there. Right, not bad at all. This is great. It's uh, again for their first, as far as I know, their first offset body shape. I love it. Uh, first one that came through was in a, a, a tobacco sunburst. Uh, I mean, this red is beautiful, but that first tobacco sunburst one that came through was just, I thought, the most gorgeous Paul Reed Smith I'd seen. Uh, you know, without being one of the uh, 10 top artist package ones. Uh, I dig this color combo a lot, actually. The, right. The, the red and the black. Yeah, it's a nice vivid stain on it. Uh, and it has a fixed bridge. I think it would be awesome with a offset type tremolo. And these aren't... Or the, Bigsby. These aren't super expensive, right? These are... Uh, they come in at couple, just around around 1300 13, Yeah, That's very doable for this kind of sound. This is... Man. Right? Actually, <laughs> actually, I might be off on that. They might be a little bit more, but... Still, it's uh, under two thousand for for a solid mahogany body Paul Reed Smith that has a versatility of options on it. Yeah, absolutely. You want to try this? Yeah, <laughs> sure. Why not? I, I've been I've been hogging all the toys this time. Since this is your favorite. <laughs> For a bridge.
bridge for a bridge pickup it's really chunky it's got a lot of bottom end to it it's surprising right yeah it's uh, i mean I, I usually i don't expect uh paul reed smith pickups to be you know very hot or or very you know kind of like a, the contemporary super hot output and this one isn't uh that hot in comparison but it is a departure from the usual paul reed smith pickup so it, it does uh, lend itself to having some heavy bite to it and some punch. Very nice. Uh, and I, I think they did have a pickup that was straight up called uh, the, the metal pickup. Mm. Uh, don't know if it's available anymore off the top of my head, but uh, when the Starless came out, I loved the sound of them, and I'm glad they actually put that humbucker in here. But again, this uh, this uh, single coil here, when driven, also sounding killer. Yeah, let's hear it. <laughs> A great sounding guitar. It feels it feels great to play. I, I do love the offsets style, and I'm glad Paul Reed Smith has one. Again, I think it'd be cool to have a tremolo on here, but oh well. But uh, we'll be back in a couple minutes with the second half of Sharpen the Axe. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Sharpen the Axe on Entertalk Radio. Powered by Pitbull Audio, which we are broadcasting from today. Sharpen the Axe. Explore the bleeding edge of guitar and bass gear. Discover a sound uniquely your own and cut through the noise. With your hosts, Eric Lucero and Paul Berezetsky. Hey guys, welcome back to Sharpen the Axe. Uh, welcome to our second half of the show. We have on the phone with us uh, Mr. John Ewing of Paul Reed Smith. How's it going, John? It's going fantastic, thank you. Right on. Thank you for coming on to the show. So, uh, uh, we were playing through the entire first half, and uh, what we were playing through in that first half was into one of the new Sonzera 20 amps. Uh, you guys have uh, come a long way in the amp department uh, since the HG70, what, 20 years ago? Right. So, right. so uh, yeah, why don't you tell us about this new series here? Well, this has kind of been uh, been a while in the making. We, um, we've learned a lot. Uh, over the years, making amplifiers, we had a uh, you know, we've had a couple of lines. I mean, you went way back with the HG70, um, but we've had uh, several different two-channel uh, amp versions, and um, and the Sonzera is our newest. Um, and um, and on a personal note, the 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 20 is uh, my favorite of of all the amps uh, that that we're doing. I, I just uh, it. It really has. It's got a spring reverb in it, which just sounds really nice, uh, and the gain structure um, is uh, is very pleasing. And both channels uh, sound good. The the, the overdrive um, on some amps, you'll have a clean that sounds away, and an overdrive that sounds a different way. Um, this amp uh, is very. Uh, the, the overdrive is definitely an extension, uh, so it doesn't sound like you you changed your whole setup when you when you go into overdrive, which is which is very nice. Yeah, and it has a lot more gain on tap than I really expected. Uh, you know, it's a, this can get nice and crunchy for a, a twenty watt amp. And if uh, if I'm correct, it's six L six power tubes and ECC eighty three S and twelve uh, AX seven in the preamp, right? That is correct. the the the, uh, the ECC eighty three and the twelve AX seven are pretty interchangeable. There are slight differences. Um, 
Doug, uh, Doug Sewell and, uh, who does the amp design and, and, and Paul Smith himself, but they're, they're, they're guys that really listen to every single, uh, every single aspect of, of the, the, the amp layout. And so some tubes have a tendency of doing this or doing that. So, um, they, uh, you know, at the end of the day, they're all interchangeable. If, if somebody was in a pinch, uh, on, you know, at a gig or, or whatever needed to swap them out, but, it, but we do. Uh, we do pay attention to each position for the preamps, and we are using a uh, small bottle 6L6 for the uh, power tubes. Right on. It's kind of it's a classic sound. You know, it's a very – with that tube selection, it's a bit on that American sort of side of things. But uh, nonetheless, I, I, I enjoyed the drive section of it. And uh, there is also a 50-watt version of the Sonzera available, right? They're, correct. We have a 50-watt – uh, combo uh, like the 20 combo that you've been playing and then we have a 50 watt head also uh, the the 50 has a, a little more uh, it's a it's a physically a bigger chassis um, so we we expanded the tr controls on the clean channels and also give uh, we give each channel its own reverb control oh nice right on instead of the uh, global uh, thing we got going on here that's correct. The 20 has a global presence and a global reverb. Uh, on the 50, the presence is still global, but you have uh, independent reverbs. Right on. Awesome. Something I would also mention uh, on the clean channel, the uh, if you if you get if you get uh, after the the volume there pretty high, it, it does a really nice uh, broken up, and you can control. You know, if you're a guy that likes. Uh, you know, single coil guy, you like controlling your, your output and your level with your guitar volume. You can crank that, that, that clean channel pretty good and get a really nice, uh, a very pleasing sounding overdrive. Right on. Yeah, I'll have to that, give that a shot that's here. That's very cool. That's what I'm always looking for out of, uh, out of my amps is get, getting a little bit of a drive in a clean channel that you can control with your on onboard volume. This one is fantastic, and you guys should definitely try that out. It's really... Um, and the, the overdrive channel, you can you can do a similar thing where you can turn uh, the volume uh, pretty high and then uh, control you know the the output with the with the gain control. Um, you know you have to you've got to be careful on the overdrive because if you're if you're too close to it because you're kind of heating up those preamp tubes uh, that they'll get they'll squeal on you if your guitar is physically too close. <laughs> um, but uh, but it, you know, it's that that's the situation to where you're really playing loud, and you're you know you're playing for a reason loud. So you're not you know like, you wouldn't be doing that sitting in your bedroom on a stool in front of it is what I'm trying to say. Right, right on. Gotcha. Now uh, moving on to some of the guitars we tried uh, I, when you guys uh, uh, brought in the uh, McCarty five nine fours. That was a pretty big deal. And uh, so why don't, uh, could you explain to uh, our listeners, why that 25.594 inch scale uh, was so important and crucial? Well, so, okay, so uh, first off, it's actually a 24.594. I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, 24.594. Uh, yeah. Right. I'll back up a little bit uh, just so everybody knows. Most uh, most of Paul Reed Smith's offerings are a 25 inch scale. Uh, the custom 24 um, has always been since day one. Um, and then most of our models, um, that was a big success. It, it worked, uh, solved lots of problems, and, and, and everybody seemed to really like the feel of the string tension and, and a lot of the side effects that you get from that. Um, however, people that are used to playing um, a more um, what, what we'll call a, a vintage instrument, they have a, a slightly shorter scale, um, you know, of, of a, your classic dual humbucking maple and mahogany guitar is a, is a shorter scale so um, th those guys tend to like it and what the shorter scale gives you from a feel point of view is the strings are slightly less taut so it's, it's just got a different string feel um, and so Paul went back and, and uh, found a bunch of uh, late 50s we'll call them vintage dual humbucking guitars and measured the scale length and uh, determined that it was 24.594. And so that's where that's where that scale length comes from. Uh, we also, on the 594, um, back then, everybody was using uh, bone nuts um, on their guitars. And so the 594 
unlike everything else we make, has a bone nut. Um, and uh, just because we wanted one of the things Paul tries to do, we all try to do in, in our search for something is, you know, the, the everybody kind of regards the 50s as the golden years of guitar making. Right. And so, you know, the the it, I don't really know if it's because that's when all the people that now we regard as the tone gods were during that era or if it was some, you know, mix of a lot of stuff, but that those are the years that we think everything was great. And so the technology to build stuff wasn't that good. So our idea is to use the technology to recreate what they were trying to do then um, and not make, you know, mass produced just whatever's. And so the 594 um, is our throwback to that era um, as best we can and still stay true to Paul Reed Smith. You know, we have the, the two volume, the two tone uh, on the 594 where you actually have independent uh, coil taps on, on that guitar and then the three way switch on the bow. So it's yeah. been a, a it's, it's been a really cool thing for us for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, uh, I really appreciate the versatility in that. I mean, uh, well, one, I just I like that I can turn down one volume and get the stutter effect with the toggle switch. But the coil taps are very much appreciated, and uh, as we mentioned uh, on the first half of the show, is a nice addition to the versatility of uh, Paul Reed Smith instruments. Right. Well, you know the 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 idea that um, that the four knob layout uh, is a that, that's you know for for somebody playing this vintage style instrument that's what they're used to and um you know so you can you can do you have the being that there's two tone knobs you know it gives us the the ability to have a uh, you know an independent split and yes for rock and roll reasons it's cool because you can turn one volume down and chirp it uh, yep. when you've got lots of volume going on and there's nothing cooler than that so uh for sure that is also something and uh, can you tell us anything about this uh, particular special run of CE24s we got? I mean, we went over the main appointments, the quilt tops, the satin black finish necks, and uh, matte uh, black headstock caps. Yeah, so the CE, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the CE. The CE was something that uh, we did uh, for about 10 years. About and we ended about ten years ago. Yeah. Um, and so as we um, as we developed the S two line and um, and you know the and brought out the uh, more affordable American made guitars, uh, we had a uh, we had an opportunity there that we wanted to seize and bring back the CE. Uh, the CE in general has a uh, it's a carved top. It's a, it, it's not as thick of a piece of maple as our core guitars. Um, but it has a different um, edge on it than, say, the S2 does uh, with the, the bolt-on maple neck. And so the, you know, we brought that guy back and reintroduced it back into the line. It's been uh, it's done really well for us. A lot of guys just like a uh, a maple, the sound that a maple bolt-on uh, gives you. Now, um, Pitbull took that one step further and uh, and did some uh, did a custom run to where uh, we. Um, we did uh, quilt tops on all of them, um, and the, the, the satin neck um, just have a really fantastic playability feel. Um, some guys uh, don't like the feel of, uh, I don't want to say don't like maybe, but like the, 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 the speed of a satin neck as opposed to a, um, uh, a, a gloss neck. Um, and so then with, with the run that Pitbull has with the with all the quilt tops, which is something that it's just a custom order. You can't uh, you can't order that uh, one at a time. And we also uh, were able to do a lot of really cool uh, limited colors as well. Yeah, that's a great point. Also, is that a lot of the finishes we have on these special run CE twenty fours are not normally available on CE on CE twenty fours. Correct? Absolutely, uh, not a single guitar in that run could you uh, walk in somewhere and order. Uh, they are all. Uh, you know that it's a it is a, a an order a, a large order that that Pitbull did with uh, Paul Reed Smith, and um, and we were able to uh, you know do the special things like the quilt top. We don't offer quilt, uh, you know. On if you go to our website, there's uh, quilt is not offered on uh, anything really except private stock. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, the you know wood is you know wood sometimes is hard to. Um, 
it's hard to source uh, correctly uh, and feel good about, uh, you know, there's been, been a lot of stuff going on the last few years about, you know, the sourcing of wood, the whole site thing now. And so quilt is something that you just don't, uh, we just don't offer it anymore. And so that you guys uh, did this custom run with, with these quilt tops um, and all the colors uh, that, uh, that you can't, uh, none of them are off the shelf colors. And you can nor up. nor is the nor is the satin black neck. N- none of these are is an off the shelf sort of thing. And we're very very happy to have them here at Pitbull Audio as an exclusive. Uh, they're very beautiful. Uh, we've had some beautiful uh, blue quilt tops and uh, black cherry quilt tops. And on the show we have the uh, Ezra Green Smoke Burst, uh, which is great looking. I've, I've been fiending a piece of key lime pie since I got here. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> you see, I suddenly want an emerald ring on your finger after looking this thing. <laughs> Uh, so we 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 tried uh, another one of uh, my favorite off the Paul the current Paul Reed Smith line is actually the Vela, and uh, we I mean, the the humbucker on the bridge is is the off the Starla, but what can you tell us about the uh, sort of staple style uh, single coil neck? Um, that was something that uh, as that guitar came about, um, that the that guitar is a little bit on its own island. Uh, for Paul Reed Smith, um, I'd, I'd like to go live that, on that island. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, because it, it is, uh, it, it's not your typical body shape. It's the offset body, um, and then it's got the uh, that Starla bridge pickup, uh, and then uh, and it also has uh, the, um, the the two piece brass saddle bridge, um, yes. which is you know unique to the Vela, um, and so in when we were. Uh, prototyping and coming up with sounds that single coil they wanted something that would would hold its own against the Starla humbucker but have a different vibe mm-hmm. uh, you know so but but not you know because you know, if you sometimes put uh, you know a single coil in there it'll get thin uh, you know it'll it'll just be altogether something different uh, and for this we wanted output and vibe to be the same uh, you know, so if you were playing a vela, whether you're in the bridge or the neck, you are playing a vela. Uh, we just wanted to give you a different, uh, a different sort of aggressive uh, single coil type option for that neck. Um, and it turns out, it, it's fantastic. I am a a really bad rock and roll player, and the first time I grabbed one, I was like, "Why is there a single coil in my guitar?" No. <laughs> and um, you know, and so I plugged up and started playing. And I was like, this thing sounds fantastic. It, it is, it is just the perfect marriage to me of, you know, something that. I, I, this is not a Paul Reed Smith term. I call it a little bit raucous sounding, uh, because it just really, it is a rock and roll sounding uh, instrument to me. For, for uh, sure. You know, and, and you know that that single coil really does its thing, and it, it's just really nice. I'm the opposite. I need to have a single coil in my guitar, and and this like the the way you match these is just I'm I'm amazed. It's super impressive. I love the sound, the way they, uh, like I was telling Eric in the in the first break, I, I was kind of messing around with a guitar with just cu- cu- you know s- sticking custom pickups, and I tried doing a humbucker uh, in the bridge and a P90 in the neck, and they just don't vibe well together at all. It's just two different things completely. But the way this is integrated into one sound is just beautiful and each one stands on, on their own very well and uh, in the middle position together they, they just sound awesome and you can even still uh, right. well, split the coil in the bridge so oh really yeah. that's right ah, i didn't you know, that's, realize that you're nice. right that's right it, it is it, the the tone is a push-pull coil tap for that uh for that humbucker um and you know the whole idea the whole idea behind what Paul is always trying to do, it, you know, that everything, every single thing is thought out. Uh, I mean, you know, we, when we're developing something, never is it a situation where somebody goes, I've got a great idea. And everybody goes, we all agree a hundred percent. Let's go with it. That's never the case. It's like, we've got a good idea. It's like, okay, well then let's talk about this to death and be sure that we're not missing any aspect of it at all. Um, you know, that's, you know, the, the humbucker and that single coil working out is not an accident. You know, that, that, you know, the R and D guys trial and error a lot to, to make sure that, that that thing was exactly what it was supposed to sound like. That's definitely, I think, I think it might be the favorite pickup that you guys ever put out. And, uh, for me, uh, and again, combined with that, the bite and punch of that, that Starla, it's great. 
Now, I got a question. Is there ever a chance that there will be a Trem version? Um, to my knowledge, no. Uh, nope. I haven't even heard any whispers of that. Um, you know, we, we do a, um, for anybody that's an, an old 80s guy, um, Vernon Reed for Living Color plays a uh, Vela. Right. Uh, he's got quite a few. He's got he's got like a set system, uh, and so uh, you know we've done some custom work for for him on his Vela, but it actually has a Floyd Rose on it. Um, but that's a you know that's through the the private stock artist relation department. But that's the only one I've ever seen, and we've we've never discussed particularly doing something for him with that. Um, and I've never even, we haven't even mentioned it. So I, I say I doubt it, but uh, but you know you never know. I mean we do. Uh, uh, we do small runs of things all the time um, just to uh, kind of put some fun things out into the market. So you, you, you never say no. And actually, speaking of small runs, uh, we mentioned the special run we did it here at Pitbull Audio. And Pitbull Audio had actually gotten some of the reclaimed wood uh, 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 semi-hollow Velas, and the other ones were custom 24s or CE 24s? It was a CE 24. They were CE 24s. I mean, they were all gone by the time that uh by the by the time they even physically arrived at pitbull audio but i did get to check out the uh, semi hollow vela and actually in particular i think that is my favorite vela unfortunately i couldn't claim one of course but uh, can you tell us about how that uh reclaimed wood run tell us the story behind that well so paul's been using the same guy um i think since the beginning uh his wood supplier and um the um he came across, uh, as, as I know the story, he came across some old houses in uh, South America and uh, that were, um, you know, ready for the to be torn down, I, I suppose, is how that's going to go. And then he ends up buying them. And um, so then we decided, hey, let's make some guitars out of this. It's really cool. Uh, the wood looked really good. Um, and um, and we and so we did. And. I feel like that's not the whole story to me. We made these guitars. They were limited runs uh, that we did of these these old houses in uh, in uh, in Brazil, and and we we've, we've done custom runs before, and then they go really good. Uh, this was the one that we had no idea that uh, we offered the run, and then immediately it was gone. Um, you know, like it was normally. Uh, normally you have a little bit of time and people are talking about it and they this and that, but uh, customers were calling in requesting these guitars uh, and it was, a, it was a huge success just because of the story of these old houses. Um, you know, and we did some, we did semi-hollow, a semi-hollow Vela and a semi-hollow CE, which, which is not an offerable. Uh, that, those, those models aren't, uh, aren't for sale. So that also made it... Um, uh, pretty desirable that that we we gave models that we didn't normally that don't that aren't offered as well as woods that aren't offered as well as these woods came from old houses that were you know 100 years or more old so that that's where that whole thing came from our supplier just found some found some interesting interesting wood and uh, and we went with it right on and uh i mean the, of course as you mentioned and i mentioned uh, the the entire run is gone right i there's probably well there's none left at pitbull audio at least is there any more of the wood from those homes available is there a possibility of another run of those no we had we had a maximum of what uh of what we were going to build and they are all gone um uh, but uh so there, there won't be from what i've been told there will no there's there's nothing left from these homes we we had a maximum number of tops but um you know and that's because you know the top of these things has to be a certain dimension you know so it's, it's just not a an unlimited uh number you know if you've got to, you've got to find uh you've got to find things that work for the physical size um with this with the crazy success that we had with these models i, I would say it, it's not a, a far uh far-fetched to think that um this sort of thing something we might do again but that's just me that's just me talking out loud Right on. Well, I'll have to keep an eye out so I can uh, get a, a semi-hollow Vela. Uh, is there anything else exactly. you can tell us about uh, that's coming in the Paul Reed Smith's future or anything you can reveal? 
Well, uh, nothing that I know right now. Um, we um, our our new year is uh, is in October. Um, the a lot of the a lot of this industry uh, starts their new year in January at NAM, um, and then we uh, we found that it works better for us to start a couple months out. Um, and you know that way that way when the new year comes, you're actually you have it and you're shipping it and so forth. But as of right now, I don't know of anything. The 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 five ninety four and the uh, the five ninety four single cut, uh, which we introduced uh, back uh, in December, um, and then the Sonzera that you know that just came out. Those are those are still the new hot things for me. Um, that's that's what everybody's talking about. Uh, Pitbull Audio has has done tremendous with with those models as well. Um, and uh, but that there's no there's no new secret that I have. I wish uh, I wish I had some secrets, um, but they. Uh, yeah, they keep secrets pretty tight to the vest, so I, I don't, I don't know about any of that. <laughs> yeah, I imagine they they uh, keep the secrets pretty cl pretty closely guarded. But uh, thank you very much for sharing those stories, uh, Paul. You got anything? You yeah, uh, I was just gonna say uh, it's great to uh, talk to you. Uh, actually, our very first interview when we started the InterTalk Radio Network was Jack Higginbotham, your CEO. Uh, so oh, right. oh wow, good to talk to you again. And then also. Uh, uh, we had an interview. We have a local uh, guitar guitar shop here, the kind of infamous uh, Fred Murata over at uh, the Repair Zone, and we had him on the show uh, uh, at one point too. And he was talking about you know basically doing a lot of setups and custom stuff, and the amount of garbage that he gets uh, <laughs> that he has to fix. Just uh, one of the things that was really sticking in this craw is. Uh, manufacturers will ship a brand new guitar and the setup is atrocious, it, it won't stay in tune, the intonation is, is garbage, and he said the only exception to that really was PRS, that they come, you know, set up really well right out of the box. Uh, that, that was really the only company he could think of that, that does their job. Well, and, and, and thank you, Fred. I've, I've had that same conversation with him before, too. Uh, and, you know, this is something that I, that I tell people that uh, I, I think is not necessarily uh, intuitive in, in this world. You know, when you think of the, the, the big brands out there, um, you know, they, they're run by people that run companies. Um, Paul Smith was, and we all, everybody has had, had to take their guitar at some point and have the strings change when you first started. Mm -hmm. And then you had to, you know, eventually you want, you, you get better, you understand that action's a thing. And then you know, you go through this, and you're dealing with repair guys, and repair guys, um, by and large, see nothing but broken, you know, bad guitars. Yeah. And um, and they have a vibe to them, we'll say. And um, Paul Smith, the guy that runs our company, was that repair guy right. that thought he just had, he he was so much the guy that had the better way to do it that he started a company. Mm -hmm. And you know that that is. That's the reason that I have always played Paul Reed Smith, and it's, it's the reason why I love my job now. Is like at the end of the day, I am working for a guy that repairs guitars. We sell his brand new ones, but that's who he is in his soul. He's a guy that is constantly trying to make it all better, um, you know. And that, you you know, you can't get that from a business person. Right. Um, and you know, this business person may be smart, and they might make a better business decision here or there. Um, that that we might not make somehow for whatever random reason, but at the end of the day, people are buying guitars that you that you touch and you that you bond with, and you know that you you have a personal relationship with. And the guy that's running our company is a guy that is just a luth a crazy luthier that wants to be sure everything is looked over. That that's um, the that's the way that's, to do it for sure. And that well, it's what makes a great product. Right, and, and, and it makes a great product, you know, so that, that could be that could, because that's where he's coming from. I think we're just about out of time. Mm -hmm. It was really great talking to you. Thanks for calling calling in and uh, going yeah, thank through you all you very much, stuff John. Yeah, yeah, thank you for uh, giving us the thank stories. For sure, thank you guys very much. And uh, we'll uh, look forward to whatever comes out of PRS in the future. Uh, really impressed with uh, what you're doing now and the direction you're, you're all going in. Yeah, absolutely. Again, as as per usual, absolutely beautiful. Well, thank you guys very much. I I really appreciate it. Right on. So yeah, we're running out of time on this episode of Sharpen the Axe. Uh, right here soon. Uh, thank you for joining us and checking out some of the latest and greatest from Paul Reed Smith and some of our special run stuff. 
Hi, I'm this, Paul Berzetsky. And I'm Eric Lucero. Thank you, John Ewing, and we'll see you next time. This has been Sharpen the Axe on EnterTalkRadio.com. Thanks to PRS. And powered by Pitbull Audio, pitbullaudio.com. See you next time. Thanks, guys.